Hello YouTube, today I'm going to be showing you the 10 best apps for Android smartphones. I myself am on a Galaxy Nexus and these are 10 apps that everybody needs because they're either just flat out cool, they're useful, or they're very productive. Just download them now and here they come. So the first app we have here is the flashlight app, which is a very simple app. It serves one purpose and one purpose only. It's to illuminate the flash on the back of your phone if your phone has one. And it, it can definitely help you in some times when you need light. And it's a very bright flash, actually. So it saves the day every once in a while. The second app that everybody needs is the Amazon mobile app, which it's pretty self-explanatory. You use it to buy things. You can access your account, uh, see recommendations like here's a book that it recommends for me because I buy a lot of books on Amazon, which is what it's supposed to be for. And here you have all the books that are related to it. And you can buy now, add it to cart, and if you have one click enabled, you can just one click buy from from your Amazon and they'll ship it right to your house right from your phone. So one of the more useful features of the Amazon app it's something that you can use while you're shopping at say Target or Walmart on um, like this was used especially on Black Friday and you think you could get the object cheaper from their website from the Amazon website what you can do is you can just go in and click scan it in the app and you can scan the barcode and it finds the item, right in this case the Cracking the AP European History Exam and you can go in, read the reviews and buy it or add it to wish list. and that's useful so you can just go through the store and see which items you want and then just all, add them all to your Amazon gift your Amazon cart and then just buy them all for a cheaper price online than in the store and they all get shipped to you Another thing you could do is you could go into the app and you could click the snap it button and you could snap a picture of the item you are trying to buy. Once again in this case the AP European History Exam book. Click OK and it searches for all your buying options and once again here it pops up and here is your book you can buy so you can either once again you can either scan the barcode or just snap a picture of it but that usually only works if it's a book or a a movie of some type so another thing you can do through the Amazon app is you can add the items to your wish list and buy them you can click here to add them to cart or you can click over here to add it to your wish list in this case I'm adding automate this book and you click it and it will be added to your wish list and you can buy it either on your phone later or on your computer or just have someone else buy it for you because it's on your wish list. And one of the most useful features of the app is you can go into your your account and see your orders and if you had any orders I don't at this moment but if you had any orders you could check to see how far they are shipping wise or if, if they have even been shipped yet you can cancel them, add to them, etc etc and you can do all this from your phone. And the next app we have is the Google Chrome app down here in my dock I have it. And it's it's a thousand times better than the standard browser that comes with most phones. It's faster, it has a better design, and it's just overall cooler. And if you're like me and you have a trillion tabs open even on your phone, you can keep track of all of them. You can see your bookmarks on your computer, on your phone, like let's go to my desktop bookmarks. These and it's it, one of the things that I like a lot about it is you can sync between all your computers and you can see that I have UW-Madison chemistry program bookmarked here on my phone on my desktop and I can view it right here on my phone and it's got the multi-touch gestures and everything you can manage all your tabs and you can click and if you don't have a, uh, what you call a bookmark you can see what, what tabs you have open on all your other computers which I have a lot of and you can let's see on my on my iMac right now I have the same tab I just opened over there back a couple seconds ago open on my desktop and I can click that and I'll also open it on my phone 
and it's, it's just very useful for syncing between different devices. And the next app I have is the Coverage Map app. And the whole point of this app is to test your coverage in certain areas, and then once you test it, you can upload it to their this Root Metrics website. And what they what that does is it puts together a whole map of Verizon's uh, like any network you have. Uh, it puts together a map of where, how good their their uh, signal is in various area, like in various areas. Like like it te you can test your strength right now, and it will use your GPS data and show Verizon exactly how your signal performed at that exact spot. Like right now, I'm testing Verizon's LTE from my house. And it's, it's, it's fast for my house, but let's say it wasn't, and I wanted to show them that it was bad. I could test it right here, and it would, and, and Verizon looks at this map. And they say, oh crap, we have a bad speed on our LTE from his house over there. So maybe we should put another tower in closer to that. Of course, I don't need another tower because we have a tower just down the block. But then it shows you in a map all the all the signal strength like you can see just down the road there's a pretty crappy signal strength black red and orange and if you drop a call or, or you have really bad data text or anything you can report that all right here and then Veri and Verizon does look at this map and, all, and other networks do too I'm just using Verizon because that's what I have and uh, they, they do look at this map and you could be the person who decides if they put in another another tower near you increasing your service and that's really good so the next one really isn't an app the next one is more or less something that comes standard on a lot of phones it's categorized categorized under the google search term and once you download it it, it just comes came standard on my phone because i have the galaxy nexus which is at Google's pure pure phone that they love and what you do to access Google this next this next app which is Google now you slide up from the bottom of your phone and you can see all these smart cards like yesterday the Packers beat the Titans 55 to 7 which was amazing you can see your local weather right now it is 25 in Waukesha Wisconsin and there's a whole bunch of smart cards that pop up depending upon if you're in a foreign country if you're in like if you're in a foreign country, it'll give you currency conversions and translations. It's really nice. Now, one of the key features of Google Now is it's it's Google's counter to Surrey, and you can ask it questions like, "How old is Barack Obama?" Barack Obama is 51 years old. It tells you the answer right there, or. When did Columbus sail the ocean blue? 1492. And if you don't believe it's fact, you can, according to these web pages, and it tells you that yahoo.com, Yahoo Amazon, and all those different websites said 1492. So it gives you sources right there. Um, you could also ask it uh, synonyms for thirsty. that can be useful in various situations or you can also ask other things like capacity of Lambeau Field Lambeau Field has a capacity of 72,928 who invented the iPhone Steve Jobs invented iPhone did the Packers win So that's one of the things that the Google Now is really good at. It, it, after a while, it like gets accustomed to your voice, and it can tell, it can translate really well from what you're saying. And and it's it's kind of like an artificial intelligence type thing. It can t tell what you're asking, and it answers kind of the way you asked it, which is really interesting. It's it's Google's counter to Surrey, and it's 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 definitely a very nice counter. And if it can't find an answer, it just Google's it for you, and Google knows the answer to everything. So. That's useful.
So the next app we have here is the Google Drive app, which is, once again, I like having all my account computers synchronized, and this is just an amazing example. I have the app here on my iPad also, so I'm going to be using that to demo it, kind of. I'm going to start a new document here on my iPad. I'm going to call it uh, Demo. And the second I create it on my iPad, it should show up here on my drive. See here's demo. And then you can see, one of the things about Google Drive is it's great for collaborating. Like if I type hello, it shows you right here that I'm typing hello on my iPad. My name is Bob. And it just shows you as you type. So it's, it's excellent for collaborating and you don't never have to click save it just saves it automatically to the cloud it's free you get five gigabytes of free storage you can put practically anything on the cloud it's great for document editing document collaborating all that stuff what else you can you can view the documents on the go you can edit them and it's def definitely something you need just check it out get a, if you have a google account you also you automatically have google drive it's just, it's, it used to be, it was formerly called Google Docs, and now it's called Google Drive, so check it out. So the next app we have here is the New York Times app. And one of the things about the New York Times is, it's one, it's an excellent, rep it's excellent reporting. I may, I may be biased to that, but I think it's excellent reporting. Um, the, the app itself is very well designed, and... You get you get breaking news alerts like let's say John Kerry is nominated to Secretary of State you get you'll get an alert and and I'm a, I'm a New York Times digital subscriber for the NewYorkTimes.com and and on the smartphones so I can go through all the topics from a trillion different things they have let's go to the technology let's find that here's technology and the headline in technology right now is probably We'll see. The headline in technology right now is is about ebook price war. The ebook price war, and you can some of them have videos, some of them don't. And because I'm a subscriber, I can read the whole dang article, which is huge. And and another thing about the New York Times app is you have the widget, which I have here on my home screen, like my main screen, and I can see all of the break the headlines on whatever category you want to. I have it set for politics. So as soon as I turn on my phone, I can automatically see if anything new is happening in the world. or It's, it's just cool, and I invite you to subscribe to the New York Times. I swear I'm not getting paid by them. It's just an excellent news service. So check that app out, too. So this app we have here is the... is. Basically, any app that scans QR codes, QR codes are becoming a very big trend across the U.S. They're, in the past year, they've been getting bigger and bigger, and now they're all over magazine ads, on TV, what have it. And they can do basically anything. They can go to websites, follow people on Twitter, and if you have an Android, they can log you into Wi-Fi, RSVP you for an event. So I set up some examples right here. This one right here would take me to Apple.com. This one right here would take me to the White House Google Maps location. This one right here would make me dial that phone number. And this one right here would would uh, would uh, put the weekly meeting in my calendar. So let's do them one by one. Let's do Apple.com. And you see, it's taking me to apple.com. What else is there? So now we can go back into the scan app. And now we're going to go to the White House Google Maps location. We're going to use it in maps. And here we are, White House in Washington. 
Yeah. We have two more left. And once again, you can use these for anything. You can check in on Twitter. I'm trying to move this so you can see. That one dialed one number, and then you just have to click call. And the last one that is left is this huge whopper code that not all phones can see. And my phone got it. And here we are, the weekly meeting of all the information for it. And then you just click done and it would save it to your phone calendar. And that is how the QR code app works. And the one I'm using here is called Scan, but there are a trillion other ones like QR Droid. And pretty much anything that scan bar scans barcodes will also come with a QR code part. So another great app that we have is the Starbucks app. And I don't even keep the icon on my home screen anymore because they have an excellent widget. And when you can access the widget here, and it brings you to the Starbucks home screen. And you can see on my card right now I have $10.94 on my Starbucks rewards card and you, you could, this is one of the Starbucks things you can click the pay now button and right now I have the screen on full brightness for the video but if you had it on a lower brightness it automatically kicks it up to full brightness so the scanner can see your code and you can pay for your drink right off your phone without taking your card out and you can reload it and add other card balances to it from your phone and you can see that I have 19 stars earned which gets me basically free refills at Starbucks and you can have a st and you also have a store locator here to find the nearest Starbucks which is very important if you're a Starbucks ad addict like I am um, this is just and they have a really nice widget so from the widget you can you can see how many stars you have right now I have 20 it says 19 because it hasn't updated from the Starbucks I just got like two hours ago you can also find the, click this icon right here, the little location one, to find the nearest Starbucks to you, and click this button right here to get right to the barcode. And the final app we have here is the Time Warner Cable app, which is excellent. It does take a while to log in sometimes. Hopefully, it won't this time. And from the Time Warner Cable app, you can set your DVR, you can see what what items you have in your DVR. You can also go into the guide, the TV guide, and record things based on that. You click, like let's say I want to record Access Hollywood, which I really don't. You can click Watch on TV, which will change, that cha which will change your TV channel to Access Hollywood. And you can also click Record to start recording it. And... Yeah, I have to be on my home network to watch live T, so I'll just set that up really quick. Now, one of the things I really don't get is that you have to be in your home network to watch live TV, even if you're a subscriber. I mean, if I was at home, I would just watch it on the big TV anyway, rather than on my phone. But I guess it does serve a purpose for some people, so you can watch live TV. Like here, so apparently the cigarettes, Cigarette Wars is on CNBC right now. You can, and, and you don't by by any means you don't have all the channels like they have MSNBC and CNBC but for whatever reason they don't have the standard NBC channel which is weird but that's just one of the purposes that the Time Warner cable app is for it's really nice and if you're a Time Warner Time Warner subscriber it's an excellent app to have so thank you for watching this video I hope you got one or two apps out of it. I mean, I, there are some apps I left out intentionally because I'm assuming that you already have the Facebook and Twitter app. If you don't, God bless you, but there's certain things that I'm addicted to. And then there are other specialty apps that I really didn't want to highlight, like the AdSense app or the NPR app, but these, those are all other apps that, you, that on a personal basis you can get. So... Oh, and the Journal Sentinel online. So get your local pa your local paper or news channel might have an app, so you can get that. And there you go.